The connection between Nibra sky disk and Mahabharat. The first archaeological proof of Mahabharat. This mysterious circular bronze disk, inlaid with gold crescent moon, sun and stars and carbon dated to be approximately 3,600 years old, has been puzzling scientists, researchers, archaeologists, historians and common man alike ever since it was found by looters in Germany in 1999. Considered to be one of the most important archaeological finds of the 20th century, no one knows what this is, what does it depict or what was it used for. Researchers say it is the oldest sky map of its kind and may have been used as an astronomical device, a calendar to keep track of summer and winter solstices, or measuring the position of the sun on the horizon, or a star guide to help farmers know when to sow and harvest their crops. But farmers who are clever enough to be able to create and read a cryptic sky map that even we can't decipher, are probably clever enough not to need one to tell them when to sow their seeds. There are several theories and speculations, but none matches up so closely as this new theory that might connect it with Mahabharat. Mahabharat is the world's oldest and longest Sanskrit epic chronicling the massively destructive war of succession between Kauravs and Pandavs. The exact date of the war is difficult to determine. Some sources give February 18, 3102 BCE, while others project 3137 BCE. New researchers propose an even earlier or even later date. Chapter 6, The Book of Bhishma. When the war begins, Sanjay, who has been given special powers to remote view the war says to the blind king Dhritarashtra. Your Majesty, I can see the entire army of Kauravs and Pandavs. I can see your majesty's sons, their armies, their enemies, their flags and banners, their weapons, shields, chariots and horses. Arjun, the chief commander of the Pandav's army, had famously Hanuman on his standard. Nakul had a golden sharab which is a strange, fictional, fierce animal. Sahdev had a silver swan with bells while Bhimson had a golden lion with eyes made out of cat's eye gemstone. And here is the interesting part that makes us sit up. Yudish there was the eldest Pandav and king who had been cheated out of his kingdom by Duryodhan. This whole battle was between him and Duryodhan to reclaim his throne. What did he have on his banner? Dhritarashtra said. Describe to me, O Sanjay, the diverse kinds of standards, resplendent with great beauty, of both the Pandavs and Kuravs in the battle. Sanjay said. Your Majesty, Yudhishthir's standard has a golden moon, sun, stars and planets around it. A golden moon, sun, stars and planets would look something like the disk. But without jumping to conclusions let us analyze this step by step. Why did Yudhishthir's standard have moon, sun, stars and planets on it? Choosing one's flag or standard must have been individual preference and a matter of personal choice and carried personal meanings. For example, the other Pandavs and Kauravs had the following on their flag which shows psychological mindset. Duryodhan, a jewel-studded snake, as well as an elephant on a separate standard, which is symbolic of his pride, anger and strength. Dronacharya, a golden altar with a water pot or kamandal and a bow denoting his birth from a water pot and symbolizing his unique and unusual combination of Brahmin and Kshatriya race, and his expertise in archery. Arjun, Hanuman. Because Hanuman had promised Bimson to help the Pandavs in Mahabharata war by being present on Arjuna's chariot. Karn, Elephant's Rope Of all the hundreds of things that Karn could have rightly chosen as his emblem he chose an elephant rope which is tremendously symbolic of his psychological state of mind, which was, just as a mighty elephant can be easily enslaved by just a short rope, I am chained to Duryodhan and will never break free even if I am fully capable of doing so. Yudhishthir chose sun, moon, stars and planets to denote his deep faith in God who is in heaven, his total surrender to his destiny and fate, his belief in the fact that heavenly planets affect humans on earth, and, his divine origins and exalted status as the rightful king of the mighty Kurus. Additionally, he was the son of Yamraj who in turn is the son of the sun. But wait, there's more than this on his flag. Much more. Yudhishthir was born in the summer month called Jayeshtha which corresponds to mid-May to mid-June, on the day the waxing moon was of five days, at noontime. 
The crescent moon on the Nibra disk is also a crescent moon of five days that corresponds accurately to Yudhishthir's birth moon. Additionally, the moon is the symbol of his lunar dynasty and the sun the symbol of his divine paternity and descent through God. Yudhishthir's standard is mentioned by others on the battlefield too. Chapter 8. The Book of Karn. On day 17 of the war, as Karn, the newly appointed commander-in-chief of the Kaurav army, enters the battlefield with Shulya as his charioteer, Shulya says to Karna. Made by metalworkers, these multicolored flags which are brocaded by gold and silver wires on cloth and fixed on top of chariots and standards and fluttering in the wind look so beautiful. Do you see Karn, Arjun's chariot's flag has golden moon, sun and stars. Same day, later, just a few hours before Karn is killed, Krishna observing the large-scale scene of destruction on the battlefield, tells Arjun how it looks like. At one point, Krishna says, Look Arjun, these red, yellow, black and white flags, adorned with symbols of stars, sun, moon and these white umbrellas are lying scattered everywhere. Made of gold, silver and other metals, these royal standards are being shot down. Is it that the stars, planets, sun and moon was a kind of royal emblem for Yudhishthir and his army and of all Pandavas? And because he was the king, he had it in bronze and gold, while the army had it brocaded with gold and silver wires on colorful cloth flags. The Nibra sky disk has in total 32 stars rather randomly placed that appear to show Pleiades star cluster on top and may or may not show Ursa Major. One might say Mercury, Venus and Mars are also present on the disk between the Sun and the crescent moon but there's no certainty. Some researchers link it to ancient Babylonian astronomical calendrical system. But, it is clear, whoever was inlaying these golden stars wasn't aiming on being specific about asterisms on purpose, or he could have done that had he chosen. Showing Pleiades, but not the other better known asterisms such as Ursa Major would prove that. Or, there may be a very specific reason for putting the Pleiades there, but not the others. Save this point. We'll discuss this later. The disc has two golden side arcs which, the researchers say, probably mean east to west orientation mechanism to help find the sun. But, doesn't it seem odd that there's no way to stand the disc in an upright position? Being round would it not just roll down and topple over? It can only lay down flat. Should it then always be hand held by the side arcs? Then, how are you supposed to read the sun's solstice? Probably, it was not meant to be hand held at all? The holes all around. There are also equidistance holes all around the disc's rim. Researchers feel the disc may have been sewn, or nailed onto, or attached to something else with the help of these holes. The bronze background. This is the reconstruction of the Nebra sky disc to show how it may have looked like after being finished. The chemist and restorer Christian Heinrich Wunderlich suspects that the Bronze Age blacksmiths treated the bronze. Tests show that a bronze with a low tin content such as the sky disc received a black-blue to black-violet artificial patina after treatment with a solution of urine and copper compounds. The bronze's natural shiny copper color would have frustratingly camouflaged the golden sun, moon and stars and would not even be correctly visible due to the harsh metallic glare of the actual sunlight on the battlefield. So it makes sense that the bronze background was especially treated to look more like bluish-blackish-brownish-dark sky. The weird arc at the bottom. The curved arc at the bottom is by far the weirdest and the most mysterious feature on the entire disc. What is this arc? What is it doing on a simple scene of sun, moon, and stars? Researchers think it might be a sunboat ferrying souls from Earth to Heaven. The fine feathery lines on both sides of the arc would then be like oars rowing the boat. Or maybe it is a rainbow or sickle moon or maybe even a sickle. But neither does the arc look like a sickle nor sickle moon has lines on it. Frankly speaking, it looks least like a boat, and, rainbows look oddly out of place between sun, moon, stars and planets. Let's also not forget, for someone comfortably having the knowledge and skill to be able to produce the Pleiades, but not having any how to show a boat that looks like a boat, or a rainbow for that matter, doesn't make sense. So what is this arc? The answer to this question too, is hidden in Mahabharat. 
before the war even started, and during the 18 or 19 days of war, there are very clear, unmissable references to comets, possible asteroid impacts, earthquakes, tsunamis, eclipses, dust storms, ground cracking open, sudden unexplained fires, smoke and smell of burning, sudden darkening of skies, explosion sounds, meteor showers and meteor, and Chelyabinsk bolides. Until a few decades ago, these mentions of extreme weather and atmospheric disturbances were dismissed as sheer poetic fancy, tall empty words and comically unreal dramatic story-telling techniques employed by poetic mind bent on creating shock and awe effects in readers' mind. But 21st century people who understand cosmic and atmospheric phenomena much better than in the past have started awakening to the fact that actually these seemingly senseless sounding words might actually mean something frighteningly very real. In fact, if the account written in Mahabharat is correctly interpreted, it means, there actually was a comet in the sky, and indeed, not just a comet but there were mixed events of asteroid and meteorite impacts that triggered off three to five tsunamis and tectonic disturbances during the war period that made water wells to overflow with foam and rivers to begin flowing in opposite directions, see receding, blinding lights like bursting second sun, opening cracks in ground, sudden fires smoke, explosion sounds, mountain peaks breaking off etc etc. A new research published in the Proceedings of the 2018 American Schools of Oriental Research speaks of Middle Gore event in which a powerful mid-air meteoric explosion in Tunguska style completely destroyed 500 square kilometer region roughly 3,700 years ago. Hale Bop or Halley's Comet, among others that we don't know about yet, are also strong contenders for being the Mahabharat Comet. Comets were in those days strongly associated with huge dynastic upheavals, massive catastrophes, bloodshed, royal deaths or impossible victories. For example, Halley's sighting in 1066 AD was believed to bring about the bloody battle of Hastings and victory of William, the Conqueror. Some people have speculated there was a comet, very likely Halley's comet during Tojin War present that brought about huge destruction and end to a long dynasty of Priam. A comet was present during the Justinian Plague as well as one during the Black Death in Europe in 13th century. Shakespeare famously wrote, When beggars die, there are no comets seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth, the death of princes. This picture is of a commemorative medal depicting the comet, in Hamburg, 1681 by Classical Numismatic Group, Incorporation. It is inscribed in German with Der Stern droht böse Sachen. Trau nur. Gott wird's wohl machen. Which means, the comet is threatening bad things. Trust. God will make things good. Note, the curved parallel lines look similar to ones on Nebra's bottom arc. The comet Kahutek in 1973 on the gold coin looks strikingly like the one on Nebra disc. Especially its hairy lines. Nebra sky disk belongs to that old time when people believed in these things more strongly which means, the curved arc at the bottom of the disk is actually a comet. The fine feathery lines may be trying to depict the glow of the comet, and the furrowed two lines the comet's tail. In fact, if we look closely at the arc it is actually thinner in the left end and slightly thicker in the right. That might mean the maker of the disk was trying to depict a long blazing comet. Interestingly, comets are called Doom Ketu or Ketu in Sanskrit, and both Ketu and Rahu are regarded as shadow planets. Mean Sanjay's description of a sun, moon, star and planets and Krishna's description of a sun, moon, stars and planets is correct. Not only there are clear mentions of comets, Rahu and Ketu during Mahabharat War, the presence of a comets or Rahu and Ketu on the disk makes more sense than a boat, a sickle or a rainbow, as all these objects can be grouped together to form celestial bodies, and can be described as sun, moon, stars and planets. So, what is Nebra sky disk after all? The Nebra sky disk is most certainly no astronomical calendar or seed sowing farming aid or sun rising and setting telling device for Bronze Age farmers. The things on the disk point to something much deeper and mysterious. Let us investigate this further. Vexiloid. American vexillologist Whitney Smith defines vexiloid as an object which functions as a flag but differs from it in some respect, usually appearance. Vexiloids are characteristic of traditional societies and often consist of a staff with an emblem, such as a carved animal, at the top. 
The Nibra sky disk is clearly marked with symbols that tally closely with birth signs, dynastic emblems of Yudhishthir and the disk's carbon age corroborates with date and time of Mahabharat war. The equidistance holes all around the rim of the disk, as well as its size and weight seem to match closely with the requirements of a royal war standard or vexiloid of a mighty Bronze Age king. It explains how the disc may have been attached to a metal pole either by being hung, nailed or fastened from the middle or through an L or a T-shaped rod. That's probably why the disc has side arcs for providing better and stronger support. It explains how the two small or large kettle drums mentioned in the Mahabharat text could have been suspended from the pole that could have self-played the drums due to free dangling from the rod. This explains the presence of golden ropes, threads, decorative musical bells, lace, trappings, gold and silver brocaded cloth and other golden decorations mentioned in Mahabharat's description of the vexiloid that would be otherwise difficult to account for. This ancient flag is the oldest of its kind in the world and is entirely made of bronze in square shape and is attached by a metal pole with a flying bird on top. The metal rim all around the square standard looks very similar to the Nibra disc. Another example is Dirafsh Kaviani, the legendary royal standard that Dirafsh of Iran, Persia used since ancient times until the fall of the Sasanian Empire. This is how the Nibra disc would have looked like suspended from a sturdy pole and harness. It is well known that Vedic culture in Bronze Age was very close in contact with Iran, Persia, and there was tremendous cultural, lingual, intellectual and trade exchange between the two countries and cultures. Of course, during Vedic age, Persia was part of Vedic culture and new researches point to Vedic Aryans as coming from Iran. It is remarkable that the Bagadates one in this picture has a beautiful metal earring. All the Mahabharat kings and princes, even Krishna are always described wearing elaborate heavy and solid earrings called Kundal almost identical to those of Bagadates one. If earrings can closely match, there's a high possibility that the vexiloid also can be similar. But, the comet is the most important object on the disk. In accordance with the atmospheric, astronomical, cosmic and geological descriptions given in Mahabharat there was actually a comet, most likely Halley's Comet, Hale Bop, 12 P. Pons Brooks or the type of Shoemaker Levy 9 that crashed into Jupiter. Whichever comet it was it sure wreaked some serious havoc and disturbance that normally comets don't. The question is, why was a comet chosen to be present on Yudhishthir's vexiloid when the sun, moon and stars, Pleiades or otherwise, would have perfectly sufficed? Especially since we know that comets aren't exactly welcome as an auspicious sign for royal dynasties, what other motive could there have been to depict the comet? Was Yudhishthir consciously or unconsciously recording an important event on his royal standard? Comets in ancient times were viewed as harbinger of bad luck, deaths, destruction, dynastic upheavals, and huge problems for kings. But sometimes, they were also seen as a sign of God, heavenly guidance, divine intervention, and if favorable luck for one party while deadly calamity for the other depending on other star signs perhaps. Since Yudhishthir won the war and regained his usurped kingdom after 13 years of unfair exile, we can safely say that the comet signaled a good and auspicious sign for him just like Halley's Comet did for William, the conqueror in 1066 AD. Perhaps, this is why Yudhishthir consciously chose it as a symbol of luck and divine assistance to be present on his war standard and that of his army, along with his birth moon. And here is where the Pleiades come in. The Pleiades are a star cluster that are called Kritika in Vedic astrology and correspond to the month of Kartik, which according to Hindu calendar, begins on October 18th and lasts until November 15th. This is why this month is called Kartik after the Kritikas, that is, the Pleiades. Interestingly, this coincides perfectly with the presumed start date of Mahabharat War. Does this mean that the Nibra sky disk is not just the war standard of King Yudhishthir, but is also the date stamp of the start of the Mahabharat War? An expert astronomer and astrologer might be able to investigate this point further. But if indeed the Nibra sky disk is a Vedic artifact from Kurukshetra, what was it doing in Germany? Let's investigate the circumstances in which Nibra disk was found. On Middleburg in Wanjin near Nibra, which is why the disc is called Nibra, two looters found the disc with their metal detector. That shiny round spot in this picture is exactly where the disc was discovered. 
buried under 3 to 5 centimeters of dirt in Middleburg, in a standing position, the disc was found together with two copper swords, two sets of remains of copper axes, a copper chisel and fragments of gold spiral armband from the same time period. In the above picture the darkish blackish round soil spot is where the looters dug for the disc after detecting signals on their metal detector, then filled up the spot with soil again, leaving the nearby soil layers undisturbed. During the illegal digging the disc was damaged. A star and a side arc fell off and the round sun got roughly torn. We don't know if the looters took that damaged gold themselves. The looters then sold the disc and other objects on the black market and the disc changed several hands in the next two years. Finally the disc and the hoard were retrieved by state archaeology department and police in a secret sting operation in 2002. Research conclusions after several detailed studies. There's a lot of hot debate and lack of consensus as to what Nebra Sky Disc actually is, who could it have belonged to, if it is really as old as they say, and if it is authentic. But Mahabharata theory is the only one so far that answers nearly all the questions. It appears to be a treasure hoard and is also called as such, Nebra Treasure Hoard. Extensive research findings express doubt if the Nebra Sky Disc belongs together with these swords, chisels, axes and armbands. Some prove it does, some prove it doesn't, because the swords look unmistakably European or German or Nordic. Such swords were not used by Bronze Age Indians. The spiral armband also bears no Bronze Age Indian look. The disc seems rather an unusual object for ancient Bronze Age cultures living in that region. Nothing concerning with astronomy or star reading has ever been found in Germany. So Nebra Sky Disc feels hugely off, like it doesn't belong there. The other artifacts are common for the area and culture, but the disc isn't. The swords, the chisel, the axes and the armbands, on the contrary appear to belong together. Several similar objects have been found in the vicinity. But nothing like the disc has ever been found. The discovery spot is doubtful. The Chapter 2 of the Munich State Archaeological Collections Analysis Volume expresses doubt on the authenticity of the find spot. Several private researchers have also pointed out that Nebra Sky Disc's find spot is not the place where it was found. Again, many are convinced the spot is authentic, but many aren't. Many believe that the looters are lying about the discovery spot. It is possible that the disc was found somewhere else and planted at the site to keep the original spot secret in order to make more treasure hunts in future possible, or to avoid legal punishments in case more artifacts than Nebra Disc were already found and sold by the looters. In any case, there's no proof that the place of find is also the place of the disc's manufacture or use. Chemical analysis shows the gold and tin used in the disc came from Cornwall, England, and copper from Carpathian Mountains. This makes the disc kind of impossible to be present on the scene of Mahabharat battle. However, the Vedic and Kuru kingdom had good and far-reaching trade relations with lots of countries in all directions, which is clearly mentioned in Mahabharat. There are accounts of kings of far and wide bringing precious gifts, stones, war animals, cattle, wool, blankets, ivory, carpets, and metals from their land as gift to Yudish there. The gold from Cornwall may have come to Kurukshetra in this way. In any case, the disc's gold was only tested using Europe's metal database and not Asian so we don't know. According to the archaeologist Andreas Muller Karp, the disc was possibly made in Anatolia. The place of manufacturer is not confirmed. The Mahabharat war on both sides mobilized soldiers from a wide range of neighboring countries and had trade relations with all of them. This wiki article says, a lot of strange standards, flag posts, banner posts have been found in Turkey, Anatolia that are cast in copper, many in the form of flat circles, half circles or squares that are filled with an openwork called jolly work or net of crossbars, central crosses, and swastikas. This fits perfectly with Nebra Sky Disc being a Mahabharat artifact. The age of the disc may be younger by 1000 years. It is impossible to date the disc individually. The calculated age of 3600 years is actually the calculated age of a wood chip found on one of the swords. So this disc may be of any age, younger or older than 3600 years. According to written records in Mahabharat, Yudhishthir had a royal bronze and gold vexiloid and several exact replicas of it. 
While the royal vexiloid was reserved for his chariot alone as his royal emblem, there also appears to have existed a second variety for his army and others, in which the image on the vexiloid was the same consisting of sun, moon, stars and planets, but they were woven or embroidered with gold and silver wires on cloth apparently to reduce its weight so soldiers could carry it. The disc together with two kettle drums and the poles would have weighed a lot and could have only be carried on a chariot. During the war on the battlefield, his vexiloid is documented to have been shot down at least three times and replaced by a new identical one. On day 14 when war continued even in the night after Jayadratha's killing, Doryodhan furiously charged on Pandav's army, confronted Yudhish there and cut off his vexiloid. Same night later, Dronacharya attacked Yudhish there and cut off the vexiloid again, which means Yudhish there or his charioteer reinstalled a new one after Doryodhana shot it down the first time. On day 17th Karn broke the vexiloid with a spear. It means that Nibra disc need not necessarily be the one that Yudhish there personally used. It could also be one from the reserve that was not yet used, or it could also be the one that broke off and fell. Maybe somebody such as a deserter, a soldier, a scavenger, a factory worker, the goldsmith or simply a cleaner, a servant or a visitor found he disc later and carried it home. The disc in its current status shows damage caused by looters while digging with a pickaxe. One side arc and a star fell off and a part of the sun got torn. An interesting thing to find out would be if the disc might be displaying any original damage sustained on the battlefield or only new ones incurred by looters. It is possible that a fleeing soldier, a survivor, or a traveler picked up an abandoned disc from the battleground and retained it as a loving memento, a relic, a souvenir, or maybe even as revenge and traveled or migrated to some other far-off place telling his family and folks stories about the days of glory and horror that he had witnessed. Then when he died either the disc changed hands, or passed down as inheritance or stolen, or gifted, or buried ultimately landing in earth where it was found. Due to corrosion we do know that the disc has lain in ground since a long time but still there's no way to tell us if it has lain in the exact same spot since 3600 years. The new swords, axes, chisels and armbands may have been manufactured by this person or his new family and friends as nostalgic fond memory or revenge tool. Note, the swords discovered are new and unused which says a lot. Maybe this disc was found in India or nearby vicinities by some foreign traveler in preceding centuries after the Mahabharat War who brought it back with him, knowing or not knowing what the disc was. A lot of valuable artifacts end up this way in people's personal collections about whom the world doesn't even know. Remember, if it wasn't for the looters and then the successful sting operation after the loot, the Nibra Sky Disc would never have been discovered. It is also possible that the someone who served in Yudhishthir's army survived, migrated to far-off lands, and started anew. But having nostalgic memories of the Great King or the Great War tried to make a replica of the Vexiloid to keep his fond memories alive. We really will never know. All in all, this new theory linking the Nibra Sky Disc with Mahabharat is strikingly fitting and compelling one. Except that there is one major flaw. Just one. Mahabharat is not regarded by researchers and historians as real history. Like the Trojan War, there's no proof if the Mahabharat War ever took place. Like Achilles or Heracles, Paris or Helen of Troy, there's no proof if Arjun or Krishna, Duryodhan or Yudhish there ever existed. Mahabharat is considered just a myth. Just a tall, over-exaggerated, imaginary tale. But maybe Nibra Sky Disc can finally change this. Maybe Nibra Sky Disc can provide the proof that Mahabharat was after all real just like now we know that Trojan War was real. Only time will tell. Thanks for watching.